Welcome into the show, Metabolic Coaching, right here with Dr. Justin Anderson. That's right. Check out our website, metaboliccoaching.net. Of course, you can always call us directly, 448-0322. That's 448-0322. And like us on Facebook, Cut the Killer Carbs on Facebook. You'll find a lot of helpful hints there and new strategies on how to deal with weight loss. Now, again... Uh, with, uh, I guess, New Year's resolutions and all that stuff. I mean, it'll be here before we know it, right? And everybody's going to say, oh, oh, I'm going to head to the gym, and I'm going to start doing this and doing that, and I'm going to lose magically all this weight by pumping iron. Uh, hold on, because you can't outwork out a poor diet, right? But Dr. Justin Anderson yep. here on the show, if you have any questions along the way, 745-5800. Good morning, doctor. How are you? Good morning. I'm fabulous. How are you, Wade? I'm, well, as you could tell, the voice is a little bit strained, uh, but otherwise I feel very good. It's just the voice is, is terrible. I mean, I sound rough. Uh, but uh, this stuff that, you know, that's going around, it really... Uh, you know, after you cough for three days, literally, uh, Thanksgiving night, Friday night, Saturday night, you cough so much that, uh, you know, you strain your vocal cords. And so that's what happened to me. But I'm otherwise I'm doing good since you asked. Well, I went through that at one point uh, not long ago, and uh, it felt like I was just exfoliating my entire upper respiratory tract. Oh, I know. Like it. Just, it, <laughs> the whole upper respiratory tract was just turning over. Uh, but that's been about a month, and and uh, I'm none the worse for it now. Yeah, well, you sound great. So, uh, but you, yeah. you're right. Coming up on the holidays um, uh, and New Year's resolutions, uh, the first thing I'll say is uh, for people you want to focus on. If you want to focus on getting healthy and losing weight, um, coming up in the new year, uh, number one in my experience. Uh, weight loss and being healthy is really about 95% about diet and it's 5% about exercise. And so in the program that I teach, the metabolic coaching program, we focus, it's like you have a test and you know, on that test, 95% of the questions are going to be on diet. Mm -hmm. So we focus on the diet. Right. And, um, I very rarely recommend exercise. Um, Exercise can do some great things for you. I mean, it can uh, change the way your body looks. It can build muscle. Exercise can build bones. Uh, it can help you release endorphins. It can do great things, but it just doesn't seem to help much from the clinical studies and actual weight loss. But focusing on the diet, that's what really helps with weight loss. And in, in, in general health, I mean, your diabetes, I, I have a lot of my clients come to the program because they have type 2 diabetes and they want to have better sugars. And they're... And some of these clients, they go to the gym regularly. They're working out, trying to get their sugars down. But every time they eat uh, a hamburger bun, it blows their blood sugar out of the water. Yeah, and that's every, true. Every time they eat... Do uh, more people... Do, let me ask you this, doctor. Yeah. Do some people, like, for example... And I, I think I know the answer to my own question. So rhetorical, right? But I'm going to ask it anyway. So, like, I could eat the hamburger bun. And, yeah, it's going to... Everybody gets a little insulin charge off of it to a certain degree, but... Maybe someone who's already type 2 diabetic, does it actually shoot the moon more than, say, a guy like me? Is that possible? It does. Yeah, that's a, especially the blood sugars will go higher. Uh, someone who is a normal weight has a fasting insulin, which is an insulin level before they eat anything of 5. Someone who is uh, obese has a fasting insulin level of 10. So that oh. means even when... Even when they wake up in the morning, before they eat anything, their body's already making twice as much insulin than someone who's normal weight. The reason that matters is that insulin is the fat storage hormone of the human body. Someone who is an overweight type 2 diabetic has a fasting insulin level of 15. So that means even before they've had anything to eat, their insulin level is three times what normal. normal. Uh huh. Three. Wow. And so they have. I three, did not know that. Three times as much fat storage hormone uh, pumping through their their bloodstream, even when they're not eating anything. Um, so um, uh, yes, and when uh, someone who is a diabetic, if they eat the hamburger bun, their blood sugar may shoot up to 300. Someone who is not a type 2 diabetic, their blood sugar may shoot up to 200 from the hamburger bun. 
And in a lot of ways, a, a diabetic who has a glucose monitor has an advantage because they can just test this out. And one of the simplest things I'll ask clients to do when they first start the program, it, if their normal breakfast is something like oatmeal or toast or cereal, I'll say, check your blood sugar an hour and two hours after you eat your normal breakfast. And then and they'll say, oh, it's 300. And then I'll say, check your blood sugar an hour after you eat a three-egg omelet with bacon and cheese and sausage and bell pepper and onions in it and see what your blood sugar is. And the blood sugar will stay dead normal. Yeah. That, that's the difference. The, uh, I will tell you, this is crazy. It's kind of, it's on the same topic, but, you know, speaking about the fact that you can follow us on Facebook at Cut the Killer Carbs, I'm on Facebook all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And so I see this sponsored ad by Quaker Oats in my news feed. Right, and so it's t it's it's totally clickbait. But they're you know they're they've bought some advertising on Facebook, and they want to promote a good, healthy, well balanced breakfast. Right, Quaker Oats oatmeal. Mm -hmm. You know, good to have these good oats and all that. So I get on there and I start reading some of the the comments, and I think they're fake comments. Right, because uh, Quaker Oats is commenting on every comment, saying, "Oh, I just love a good bowl of Quaker Oats in the morning before I get up and go to work." And, and Quaker Oats, yes, and you need to try our, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I get on there, and I post it on their thread on this sponsored ad. Yeah, but doesn't that raise your blood sugar to, you know, jack it to the moon? Or I made some comment. Within five minutes, it was taken off. Taken off, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it, Quaker Oats, they didn't, they didn't like my analysis of what Quaker Oats does to your blood sugar. I don't often walk down the oatmeal <laughs> aisle, but, uh, well, you know... I, I guess they paid for it so they can take it off if they want. Yeah, of but course they did. The uh, I was walking down the oatmeal aisle and there's uh, all the heart healthy, heart healthy checks on uh, Quaker Oats, and there is weight control oatmeal, and made by Quaker Oats. And I don't have any problem with Quaker itself. It's just oatmeal itself. If you take uh, if you take one serving, which is one cup of oatmeal it'll have something like 32 grams of total carbohydrate and it has all that fiber that's supposed to be great for you and you right. take off about four so you subtract four grams of fiber from 32 grams of total carbohydrate so you end up with 28 grams of net carbs and all that a net carb is a net those are the grams of carbohydrates in your food that will be turned directly into blood sugar and so you end up with 28 grams of blood sugar from one bowl, one serving of oats. And and uh, for someone who's diabetic and wants to control their weight, that's exactly what you want to avoid. Avoid 28 grams of sugar in your breakfast to start off your day. Yeah, that's the whole thing that we've talked about before, about uh, for so long, for decades, we were told, you know, a good, healthy breakfast is one with the oatmeal and some orange juice and blah 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 and they're yeah. Like, yeah you know what i'm saying and that's really not that great so <laughs> one a lot of people are familiar with the old usda food pyramid and the usda food pyramid on the bottom of the pyramid it was called the breads and cereals group and it's uh, the it said you should make up the majority of your calories from breads and cereals and um what I teach in metabolic coaching to help improve your weight and your diabetes and your blood pressure is to essentially cut the bottom off the food pyramid. You just remove the breads and cereals group from the food pyramid and then that leaves you with a base that's, you know, uh, uh, lots of green leafy vegetables. You can have those uh, meat, fish, fowl, you know, like uh, turkey, chicken, that sort of stuff. You can have those uh, full-fat fermented dairy, like cheeses. You can have cheeses. Um, you can even have things like um, yogurt. Um, but if you ever, you want, you always want to buy full-fat yogurt because you need the fat. Your body needs the fat. It knows what to do with the fat. And um, you want to buy unflavored with nothing added to it. So it's just full-fat plain yogurt. Uh, Interestingly, for yogurt on the package, it'll say something like 15 grams of carbohydrates for the yogurt. However, um, they count those grams of carbohydrates before it's been fermented. After the yogurt has been fermented, um, uh, the lactobacillus, which is the bacteria that ferments the yogurt, takes most of, takes about half 
of those grams of carbohydrates and turns them into lactic acid. Mm-hmm. And so um, if you're eating full fat fermented uh, uh, plain yogurt and it says 15 grams of carbohydrates, it really has about seven. So uh, seven or seven and a half grams of carbohydrates. Um, the average standard American diet is about 15% of calories from protein, 20% of calories from fat, and 65% of calories are carbohydrates. Which includes the simple sugars and all that. Mm-hmm, which Breads, includes, pastas, you name it. Right, the simple sugars and the comp. And so there, there used to be this distinction between simple sugars, which were um, things that were like one glucose molecule, and complex carbohydrates, which were long chains of glucose molecules found in uh, foods like breads and potatoes and things like that. Uh, and people thought that they burned differently. But the truth is, one of the things with the highest glycemic a glycemic index measures how high a different food raises your blood sugar. And one of the foods with the highest glycemic index is a baked russet potato. It has a glycemic index of 111. Yeah. And to for a comparison, uh, table sugar has a glycemic index of 68. That's unbelievable. A That's slice, crazy. A slice, slice of bread has a glycemic index of 71. So even though this baked russet potato has all complex carbohydrates, it'll blow your blood sugar through the roof. So are you telling me that I'm better off to eat a bowl of ice cream as opposed to the potato? Um, not exactly. <laughs> Wait, oh, I was hoping for you to say yes. Oh, okay. That's because the, the ice cream is going to contain sugar, whether that sugar is high fructose corn syrup or it's regular table sugar. The sugar that's in the ice cream um, contains fructose, and your body can't burn fructose. Your body takes the fructose and turns it into triglyceride, which is a fat storage molecule. And so the fat storage... Uh, the only thing your body can really do with the fructose part is store it away as fat. So sugars are uniquely fattening. And so I'll tell you that when I heard that a Snickers bar had a lower glycemic index than uh, lower glycemic index than a slice of bread, you know what I did? I ran out and I bought a Snickers bar and I ate it and I enjoyed it. As I, however, as I've learned more about this, I learned that the sugar that's in the Snickers bar, number one, is uniquely fattening. Uh, number two, sugar is very inflammatory for a lot of people. Uh, it it can contribute to their joint pain and their arthritis, arthritis or whatever they've got stuff. going on. So it creates more of an inflammatory response than, say, perhaps the potato right. might have would. Right, exactly. So the, okay. the sugar would be more inflammatory that you would find in the ice cream, but the um, potato is going to give you a higher blood sugar spike. So neither. Well, okay. Let's say I'm normal, which I am. I'm a normal guy, but you know, if I'm normal, you don't want to be normal, Wade. Well, I know, but in in, <laughs> th- in this day and age, being normal is exactly what you don't want to be, because you got two thirds of Americans overweight or obese. That's that, true. That is normal. And no, not only that, doctor, but kids too. Kids. I mean, the kids. That's really, it's really perplexing. And I'll tell you, I have noticed. Uh, so, this is this has been in the past couple of years. I've when I've gone out. You know, you go out in public, you go to a store or whatever, and you'll see there'll be a mom who is overweight or obese. And she'll be maybe uh, 50 or 60, and she'll have a daughter who's maybe 20, or maybe, you know, so maybe, yeah, maybe, 20, so. maybe 50 and 30, something like that. And, okay. and, and the daughter will look, will have a body shape very similar to the mom. She'll be, but she's even more overweight and more obese. So it's happening earlier. Just like you mentioned, the ki- the kids are developing obesity. Kids are developing type 2 diabetes, which used to be called adult onset diabetes. And so the younger generation is developing the same problems, except it took it took mom, uh, you know, 50 years to get there. And it's only taken the daughter 20 years to get there. And she's she's even in worse shape than the mother is. Yeah, what is that all about? I mean, what do you, how do you, I mean, how do you, process that i mean what what's going on i mean i've seen a lot of studies you know that are talking about in fact i was watching uh television one of the you know they have these health segments on tv all the time no hey, no easier way to get confused than to watch the health segment. no kidding right and they were talking about the, the obesity epidemic right. in the children and they said oh the cdc says uh limit 
you know, some of those sweets or something. Yeah. And I thought, wait a minute, now, there's a lot more to it than that. But um, but how do you process that? I mean, is I mean that just sounds so crazy to me. I, because you're right. I mean, I, I've noticed the same thing. There's a, a physician in California. He's a pediatric endocrinologist, and he treats uh, children who are overweight and obese uh, with essentially a very si- simple protocol, which is, number one, the only, um, the only thing they can have to drink is whole milk or water. That's it. And so that cuts out all of the sodas, Um, the juice boxes, the fruit juices, all that's gone because that contains sugar. And what parents don't understand is that ounce for ounce, a juice box or a a fruit juice, even if it's 100% all organic fruit juice, it contains ounce for ounce exactly as much sugar as a regular Coca-Cola. Yeah, Um, which I think contains, it's right on the can, like 43 grams of sugar in a 12-ounce regular coke i think and, and it's going to be ounce for ounce the same in the fruit 43 juice. grams wow the second uh thing that he does is they can't have any sugar at all no sugar period and um you know my they're having a christmas party at my daughter's preschool and my wife is on kind of the planning committee committee for the christmas party right and so my wife immediately said well, you know, we need to have somebody sign up to bring water. And then someone else on the Christmas committee, little bottles of water, and someone else on the Christmas plant party committee said, well, you know, they should bring ju- juice boxes because I think the kids and the parents have come to expect juice boxes at a party. And uh, that's insane. Well, it's, it's insane to feed that stuff to you. Okay, kids. so let me run this through with you. Uh, so we had... A bunch of family from out of state that came in for Thanksgiving, right? Got them ju- juice boxes. Well, it was very, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it happens at family gatherings. Of course, in our house, we have none of that. Of course, my wife being a health coach, as you know, she doesn't tolerate any of that nonsense. But when family comes in, she goes to the store and she brought in some sodas, which I haven't seen in our house in years, uh-huh. and some other things. And I said, I said, I can't believe you bought that. And my wife says, well, obviously it's not for us. It's for my niece and nephew. They like Mountain Dew or whatever. And I said, do they realize, well, yeah, but, you know, I'm not here. We're here for Thanksgiving, and I'm not here to be health coach and be preachy to my own family. Mm. I said, yeah, but it's just. And so anyway. It gets it gets it, hard. It gets hard. Yeah. And so my brother-in-law, if you will, uh, he, 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 we had a 12 pack of Mountain Dews. They're here for two days. He drank all of it. And, yeah. and, and I, of course I'm not going to say anything to the guy, but I mean, it's just like one right after the other sitting around watching football and, you know, it's just pow, pow, pound, pound, Mountain Dew after Mountain Dew. And I'm looking at him going, and finally I did say something. I said, man, if I had to drink all those, I'd be throwing up. And he goes, you don't drink sodas at all. And I said, I haven't touched a soda in, I don't know, eight, nine years. I I had a physician who came and took the metabolic coaching course. He went through it. He lost 35 pounds. His wife did it with him. They both lost weight. And and they didn't, they were, you know, just normal people. They didn't have any major health problems like diabetes or anything. They just wanted to lose weight and feel better. They did the program. And then he, um, I was talking to him one day and he said, you know, I've, I've realized that this sugar and carbohydrates, that really they do act like a poison. Uh, in the human body, and he said, "Now when I feed my kids this stuff, I feel like I'm poisoning them." Well, see, that's so what, you, right. You, good you, point. You get it. You get into that. It's like you don't want to buy Mountain Dew for your family because you feel like you're yeah. You're I harming feel like it's, it's it's a it's yeah. giving them strychnine or something. And so you just kind of as you as you get further into this, and you, you begin to realize, hey, you know, that the foods like sugar, things like sodas, even things like fruit juice, that they really are the they are too much sugar for your body that and they end up acting like a poison then you do change the way you feed your kids and and we we don't feed the kids breakfast i'm uh, sorry we don't feed the kids bread like this morning for breakfast uh it was bacon and eggs bacon and eggs bacon right. and eggs right and the kids got half of an apple <clears throat> children can tolerate some fruit lots of times lots of times overweight and obese or type 2 diabetic adults they really can't tolerate fruit because um, 
even stuff like blueberries or whatever. And I've had some I've had some diabetic clients who even if they eat berries, it really messes up their blood sugar. Uh, however, kids can. And the biggest thing with kids is that kids they don't have to lose weight. Kids are actually supposed to weigh five pounds more next year than they do this year and five pounds more the next. So if you can just kind of keep a kid's weight about the same as they grow, they'll grow into their weight. And so you don't have to put them on. Uh, I would limit limit the sugar, the fruit juices, the soda. I would limit the breads because the breads aren't doing them any favors. And just by doing that, they can grow. They can kind of maintain their weight and grow into their weight. And well, my kids who go to Lubbock Cooper uh, ISD, and I have two in high school, one's a senior, one's in ninth grade, and then I have a seventh grader. And so you get kind of a cross-section between junior high and high school. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they're all very fit and run track, and, you know, my daughters are are very athletic, right? And they don't drink any of that garbage or eat, or eat garbage. As a matter of fact, over the years, because of my wife, if you put garbage in front of them, they won't touch it because they don't think it tastes good. Right. So the point being is that it does start at the top, like what the parents do, the kids will follow. Mm -hmm. That's very true. I see that in supermarkets. I see it all the time. Uh, you know, you look at you look at a grocery basket of somebody who's obese and, and out of shape, and if they have a kid tagging along, like you just said earlier, mm -hmm. they look like the parent, maybe even worse. Uh, but more importantly, I, I, I get a real kick out of asking my daughters, well, what do you see at Lubbock Cooper uh, lunchroom? Well, what, do, what do kids bring? And the stuff they tell me that they bring for lunch, like some kids, yeah. like, oh, well, you know, powdered donuts, Little Debbie this. or and I'm like, really? For, oh, for, and ding -dong. Yeah, for yeah. lunch. I mean, that's so, I mean, it, I mean, it's almost, I mean, maybe I'm going overboard. But it's almost a form of child abuse, in my opinion, to do that to a kid. Because the kid clearly doesn't know. The parents should know. But, I mean, but to feed your kids some sour warheads and some pow powdered donuts for the lunch is outrageous to me. I, I think the, the, is that? The, the children don't know and, and the adults don't know. They may know, well, you know, this is... Like, not the best, but not it's the okay. Best, or, but it's okay because, uh, you know, some some kids can eat that way without showing, you know, physical effects of becoming overweight. Um, however, some kids it manifests as behavior problems with when they have high blood sugar they misbehave, and when they have low blood sugar they're angry and they misbehave. Um, uh, but that gets into all of the psychological issues yeah. that yeah. we see in the classroom, too, where you have little Johnny is just hyper and bouncing off the walls and being the class clown, and the teacher can't control the classroom. I mean, how, the point being is that a lot of this comes back down to the basics. The food is your medicine. Food is what you is what your body reacts on. And if you're feeding it garbage in, you're getting garbage out, and you're getting... You're getting nowhere. It's really, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of scary, isn't it? It is, and it's, it is. Um, I would just say, I would just say the overall message is this: um, if you want to, if you want to do something for your kids for their general health, I would avoid feeding them. I, I would, I would follow Dr. Lustig's rules, and Dr. Lustig's rules are: the only thing you can drink is water and whole milk. So get rid of the sodas, get rid of the fruit juices and the juice boxes, and avoid sugar. And do that, and you'll be doing, you know, you'll be doing your kids some favors. Uh, there was a famous dentist named Weston A. Price, and Weston A. Price, um, basically, he made the connection between these cultures that don't eat a Western diet. The we they don't eat this Western diet of sugar and processed refined carbohydrates. Uh, th these people had beautiful teeth, you know. Uh, they had, and n not only did they have beautiful teeth, but they didn't have heart disease. They didn't have a lot of the diseases of Western civilization. They didn't have diabetes. And so, uh, if you talk to a dentist today, a lot of times the dentist will say, "You need to take care of your teeth. Take care of your teeth because people with good teeth have been shown to uh, have less diseases like diabetes and heart disease." But that's not what Weston A. Price found at all. 
what he found was the diet that is good for your teeth, which is a very low carbohydrate diet that's low in sugars, uh, it, it's low in sugars, it's low in refined carbohydrates, that diet that's good for your teeth is also good for your heart and good to prevent diabetes right. and good to prevent Western diseases and cancers. Okay, so text coming in from Barry. He wants to know about, what about unsweet tea? I have nine grandchildren. I'm trying to readjust what y'all are talking about that is healthy for them. So, Unsweet tea is probably uh, okay, but you probably don't need to give your kids that much caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so unsweet, non-caffeinated. Yeah, it, 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 if I'm if if I'm correct, uh, if I'm correct, uh, the decaffeination process for tea uh, is not as rough or doesn't require as many chemicals as decaffeinating coffee, and so decaffeinated tea I think is fine. Uh, if they want to have some tea, say like uh, in. The odd thing about caffeine is this, is that caffeine will, uh, it ramps up your sympathetic nervous system, so it's going to ramp up your your fight or flight response, and the half-life on caffeine is eight hours, which means that if you have, say, unsweet tea at lunch, half of that caffeine is still going to be there when you go to bed at, at night, and if you have unsweet tea at dinner, then two-thirds of that caffeine is still there when you go to bed at night. So uh, by giving them the caffeine during the, during the day, if you give it to them past breakfast, uh, you're going to be messing up their sleep. And messing up the sleep causes stress. But, I can, but, you know, my wife always pushes back and says, yeah, but if you have a beer with dinner, that's five bucks. Yeah. So I, I never hear the end of that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, but I'm like, well, yeah, but those teas, I mean, come on. It, it does get expensive. And, and, you know, the other night we went to go get, uh, we went to go eat out. And when we did, a lot of times we ordered water. And about a couple of the kids, they always want the carbonated water. And a lot of places they'll have that. And then they'll say, well, why can't I have the root beer? Well, it's too much sugar, you know. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's go out the phone lines. Good morning. Welcome into the show. <laughs> Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, you just Wade talked about beer. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> doctor, how much? Uh, how many uh, deals of sugar in a say a twelve ounce can of beer? You know, the different beers will have a different amount of sugar. It'll be printed on the label. Oh. Uh, some of them will be like nine grams or twelve grams of sugar. Wade, what are your... They don't call it sugar. No, it's carbs. Carbohi- they call yeah. it carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. But your body turns that carbohydrate into sugar. Yeah. Uh, a 12-ounce uh, can of Curse Light has 5 grams of carbs. Well, that's kind of low, isn't it? It is, yeah. But if you drink 6 of them, you've got 30 grams. I mean, that's that. now you're pushing... You're over the max of what Dr. Anderson would say is safe. You're right. It's on the... Lo- it's... it's uh, kind of on the low end of carbohydrates but it does have some carbohydrates dr richard bernstein uh who wrote a book called dr bernstein's diabetes solution and has been treating uh diabetics uh, with a very low carbohydrate diet for 40 years basically he tells people that they can have one alcoholic drink uh, a day and that one alcoholic drink doesn't mess up their blood sugar or their insulin levels too much uh well, glass of wine beer or one cocktail kind of thing maybe right or one cocktail if it's not like a sugar cocktail like a margarita because the margarita will have a, a thousand you know a thousand calories worth of sugar in it oh yeah 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 that's true but Fair um uh once you get past uh two drinks or three drinks then it uh, then just the alcohol itself starts to mess up your blood sugar and your insulin levels in addition to the carbohydrate content mm, okay I also, how about uh, I like to drink a Powerade every once in a while. Yeah, so the Powerade, it'll, it'll if you look on the uh, forty-three grams of sugar. Yeah. It, really? It's, yeah, it's high. I believe oh. me, because I, 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 I tell you, one of the things that uh, I said earlier, I didn't drink any Coca-Cola's for. I haven't touched a Coke in over eight years, but I was drinking Gatorades for right. a long time, thinking, oh, well, this it's a healthier choice. But when you start reading labels, and that's what we recommend you do, you start looking at the label on the back of a green Gatorade, 
it's more than a can of Coke. Oh, my gosh. Oh. A lot so, of sugar in there. So, yeah, right. So look at the label because you'll see how many carbohydrates are in it, number one. And number two, you'll see, look on the ingredients and see what they add. And it's going to be high fructose corn syrup. That's right. Which is lots of fructose. Oh, and that fructose, your body stores it away as fat. What, do you have any medical or health concerns that in particular or weight? Yeah, yeah, I'm a... Uh... I'm over a little bit. Well, I, you got on to me for saying. I think you're the one that said that no such thing as a borderline diabetic. <laughs> so that's, that's what I've been classified. I can get anywhere from my glucose to be 130 on a high read to uh, oh 115 on a low read. And that's your morning fasting blood glucose? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So once you get a fasting blood glucose above 124, then you, you're considered to be a type 2 diabetic at that point. And so uh, the good news is you have very early diabetes. It's not advanced. And so if you want to get your blood sugars down to normal, uh, following a very low-carbohydrate diet, uh, I, w I always tell people to do it under the supervision of their doctor because if you're taking certain medications, uh, those medications can make your sugar too low. Um, but following a very low-carbohydrate diet is an easy way to reverse the diabetes, get your blood sugars back down to normal, and uh, not require the diabetes medications the rest of your life. Yeah. And, and I've had, just like you mentioned, uh, the Powerade, right? So I've had clients who come and taken the program. They've done real well. Their blood sugars have gotten better. Oh, but they, you know, kind of got stuck, couldn't make any progress. Well, some of these guys are old farmers who are out on the tractor, and that's exactly what they do. They drink Powerade when they're out on the tractor or something like that. And so uh, cutting that out can make a big difference. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I gave up Gatorades about, I don't know, eight, nine months ago. Tell a big difference. I, I, liked, I liked a Gatorade every once in a while, but I just, man, I yeah, after. You know, I just learning what I'm learning now. I just thought, man, I got to get rid of that. Any other questions? All right. No, sir. That's very good. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. And Thank you, you for and calling. And you can always try the Wade Wilkes way of just go 72 hours without food. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And a lot of people can't do that, by the way. But I can, and, and I feel great uh, doing a 72-hour fast. Just don't eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Eat Sunday night and Wednesday night. And Wednesday night's your next meal. And then you can cheat a little bit on those other days. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, you love it, don't you? <laughs> you know, the, the, the cheating is really a, a, it's a killer. It does, the yeah. The cheating is a killer. It is. And that's because uh, both the wheat and the sugar, are they have addictive properties to them. Uh, wheat stimulates the opiate receptor in your brain which is the same thing heroin stimulates right and sugar stimulates the dopamine receptors in your brain which is the same thing cocaine stimulates and so if i was going to say what is the metabolic coaching diet it's a very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet correct it's 100 percent wheat free sugar free and gluten free mm -hmm. because i think that is where people get the most benefit they get the anti-inflammatory effects they get the um, the, the anti-inflammatory effects, the weight loss effects, the better blood sugar effects. Um, and just introducing wheat and sugar to some people is just like telling a smoker to have one drag on a cigarette. Yeah. And, and they can it's get hot. sucked right yeah. back into You're it. You're absolutely correct. I mean, it is, it is something that uh, it's a slippery slope, too, because you feel like uh, you feel empowered, right? You, you, you do great for, say, I don't know, let's say five days. Let's say you've maxed. Let's say you've done it. Let's say you've only you followed the plan and you've only had 20 grams of carbs on Monday through Friday. Then you think, well, you know, Saturday I'm at the restaurant. I, I just want to go to the local Italian pasta place and, and I want to load up on a big bowl of spaghetti and meat sauce. And, and right. so you do that and you just, it wrecks it. I mean, bam. And then you think, well, come Sunday. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, so I'll get back on Monday, and then you do it again, and it just—it's kind of self-defeating. I, I understand that. Yeah, you get you get the inflammatory effects from the gluten in the pasta, 
you get the high blood sugar effects uh, and insulin stimulation which cause you to gain weight and it kicks you out of ketosis um, it, for the metabolic coaching program I recommend that people eat 20 grams of net carbohydrates a day and so that's a very low amount of carbohydrates and that puts you in a state of fat burning called ketosis where your body uses fat for fuel 24 hours a day seven days a week and that's how you that's how you lose the weight okay where do you plateau I mean when I say plateau when you did this and you're really thin uh, I think you ought to work out a little bit myself but that's just me uh, lift, I like, I like lift to, some weights I do about five pull-ups <laughs> every week or two but but anyway but when you were a fat body right uh-huh. and you were at my my level where I was am, and I was losing weight oh by the way I didn't gain uh, any weight over the Thanksgiving holiday, and I know you didn't either. But I was really impressed. I actually lost one pound uh, since last week because I always weigh in on Monday mornings, uh-huh. and I was down a pound. And I, You're you know, ahead of the game, I, man. I, 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 I watched it, but I mean, I, you know, again, I had the sweet potatoes and all that, that, you know, stuffing and stuff on Thanksgiving and whatnot. But, but, but that's beside the point. I'm just saying, do do you get to a point where you get almost I mean where do you stop losing weight when you get to the ideal body weight and you don't look malnourished and I'm not saying you look malnourished but I mean do some people is that a concern for some people when they go well if I do that for the rest of my life am I just going to wither away and blow away because no, I don't have I've never seen it you've never seen you it. know uh num- number one I've done this I've, I've taught people this for several years and during that time what I've found is that people they come down to you know, if you look up what's your ideal body weight, there's some range of ideal body weights. Yeah. Your BMI. People, they come down into that range of their ideal body weight or their ideal BMI, and they just kind of sit there. So they don't It just stabilizes on its own? That's right. It stabilizes on its own because your body has reached a new, um, a new, a new normal. So you could do this. So how long? Okay, well, let me ask. Well, hold on. Let me say one, one other thing. If you think about, like, the the Plains Indians, the American Indians. Right. If you've ever seen pictures of American Indians or even uh, uh, the Inuit or Eskimo or whatever, uh, they were a trim, healthy people. They were muscular. Um, they were tall. They were they were in excellent physical shape. Okay. And yeah. they, they ate a very low-carbohydrate diet because that's just the way that they're uh, – they, they were hunters, you know, and they hunted buffalo, and they ate buffalo fat and buffalo meat. But didn't they introduce us to corn and all that stuff? <laughs> well, the, you know, there were some tribes, but like the the Plains Indians, they were meat like eaters. Like Comanches. Um, yeah. the Plains Indians were meat eaters, and the, the natives in Alaska and uh, uh, Canada, they were mainly meat eaters, you know, living off of whale. Hunter-gatherers. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so they... They, they didn't waste away to nothing. Well, some call this the hunter-gatherer diet, right? Yeah, so basically it, it, the, what has happened to humanity is that before we had agriculture, before we even grew grains, we ate a very low level of carbohydrates every day. And then 10,000 years ago was the agricultural revolution, and we started growing uh, oats and wheat and rice and all you know these different cereal grains. And barley and so the amount of carbohydrates in our diet increased significantly but what's happened in the last 200 years is that the amount of carbohydrates we eat has just skyrocketed to where today the average American consumes 150 pounds of flour and 150 pounds of sugar every year yeah right And so that that's 300 pounds of refined carbohydrates and your body doesn't know what to do with that so the whole the whole the diet is nothing earth-shattering it's just return back to what your body is used to eating, what your body is designed to eat, and it's not designed to eat 150 pounds of flour and sugar every That's year. That's true. Uh, okay, go back to the text line. Uh, Barry says, uh, Wade, we do a lot of Mayo. I don't know what Mayo is. How does it rate? Do you know what my, M-I-O is? Uh, that is some sweetener. It, or it's, it's something you put into your water to flavor your water. Mayo? Uh, I've never heard mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, and I'm I would have to look it up. I'm not exactly sure what the nutritional information is on that. Uh I've had some clients over the years who use it and uh I think they've done fine. But, you know, is it kind of a stevia-based product or something? I I'll, I'll have to look it up. 
I don't, I don't, but I, I, I just never heard of Mayo. So we're looking it up, Barry. So wait one, as we say in the army, wait one. It says naturally sweetened. The problem is looking at the. Uh, it doesn't have aspartame you know? in it or something, does it? Well, that's the question. Because if it does, that's not good. And if it has any kind of aspartame or any kind of chemical derivative. Right, because the artificial sweeteners. They're like, really bad. They can, even though they may not affect your blood sugar, what they'll do is they can uh, raise your insulin levels. Your body has an insulin response to the artificial sweeteners. Mm hmm. So. Yeah. So you got to be careful if it does, but you're looking it up. Yeah. But you said you've had some patients that have been on this Mayo thing, and it's not too bad, I guess. Okay, so this is the deal. Um, the the Mio contains Mio, sucralose, and I, I've got a study just saved on my computer which shows that sucralose uh, worsens uh, insulin secretion and worsens insulin sensitivity in diabetic patients. So... You know, that's not a good thing. It is an artificial sweetener, and it says both sucralose and asasulfame ace potassium, the sweeteners in Mio, it says they're recognized as safe by the Food and Drug Administration. <laughs> so, so that's good. Uh, however, that's two artificial sweeteners, and the artificial sweeteners, they can have some effect. I would say uh, some effect on weight gain. So I would say you would, in general be better to use something like stevia if you want a sweetener um, however my, my general rule on artificial sweeteners is this is that if if you're doing a very low carbohydrate diet eating less than 20 net carbs a day and you're losing weight your blood sugars are getting better your blood pressure is getting better you're making progress if you're making progress and still drinking a diet coke here and there or still using this Mio uh, flavor enhancer in your water then then you can keep doing what you're doing but if you get stuck and you're not making the progress the blood sugars aren't improving or you're not losing the weight you want then cut it out and see what happens um, I, I do think that there are some bad things that, that go along with the artificial sweeteners however uh, if you can do the diet and still use some of this stuff in your water and make progress that's okay yeah okay that's fair enough I I I don't know. I just think any of this artificial business is just bad news all the way around. I mean, I think the aspartanes and the sucralose and all that kind of stuff are just inherently, uh, you know, because you take the stuff in and your body goes, uh, okay, what do I do with that? I don't know. Right. Oh, well, okay, store it in the liver. And then we've talked about this before, that the instances of fatty liver disease are through the roof. Yeah. That's not good. Hey, one, one of the things that these artificial sweeteners do is that you've heard of probiotics. And mm -hmm. probiotics are good bacteria that are supposed to live in your digestive tract. Right. And so these good bacteria that are supposed to help you digest your food and make your neurotransmitters and all that sort of stuff, they take up some of these artificial sweeteners. They can't, they can't process them, and so it kills the probiotics. So it kills the good bacteria in your digestive tract. So, in general, avoiding them as much as you can is a good thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, we, <clears throat> let's see here. I, we have time for, no, nope, I guess we don't. Okay, never mind. Hey, uh, doctor, we always appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, Barry says, thank you for that information. Thank and you, Barry. Appreciate the text. Anthony texting in saying, you sound rough. How are you feeling? I feel fine. Otherwise, the voice, as long as the voice holds out, I'm good to go. He's feeling a lot better Thank than you. he was a few days Thank ago. Thank you, Anthony, for that. Um, as long as I don't feel like I need to go home and go to bed. It's just the voice. It's kind of rough. Uh, but anyway, Dr. Justin Anderson, everybody, Metabolic Coaching. Of course, check us out on the web, metaboliccoaching.net. You can call us directly at 448 That's 448 Check us out on Facebook, too. Cut the Killer Carbs. Cut the killer carbs right there on Facebook. As once again, we appreciate it, Doctor. We look forward to seeing you back here next Tuesday. And I tell you what, your show is really going to, and Dr. Edwards and all of our medical programs, Dr. Gray, they're, 
this time of year are, are extremely popular as people go, okay, what do I need to do? Mm-hmm. I mean, how do I want to be healthy? I, you know, the New Year, New Year's resolution's coming up. I want to get this done. So be sure to tune in to all the programs because we talk about it all the time, and I think the message is starting to get out. You my, know. my advice is very simple. Cut the killer carbs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I hear you. I like fasting, too. Uh, I like to throw that in there. That's my kind of thing. I've done it now for five weeks, and I've have lost uh, about 15 pounds and feeling good. I want to take it down to about 180, which means I've got another 35 pounds to go. But you know what? That's okay. I mean, I enjoy doing what I'm doing, and it's it seems to be it's obviously working. Keep it up, man. But I'm but uh, whatever whatever you, you're doing out there. But I think you're you're onto something here, obviously, and it's all good. All right, Doctor, thanks so much. We look forward to seeing you back here next Tuesday on the show. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And, uh, you know, go easy on the carbs, right? That's right. All right. Thanks, Wade. Stick around. We'll be right back with more. Listen to your.